신천지 말씀 대성회에 참석하신 국내외 전 세계 목회자 여러분 반갑습니다. 저는 오늘 사회를 맡은 신천지 요한 집파장 이기원입니다. 서울에서 또한번 말씀 대성회를 허락해 주시고 시록의 성취 실상을 깨달을 수 있도록 인도해 주신 아버지 하나님께 감사와 영광을 올려드립니다. 자 그럼 말씀을 듣기 앞서 박종렬 바돌로우 대표기도 인도해 주시겠습니다. 기도 후에는 특별 영상을 시청하시겠습니다. 감사하시고 고마우신 아버지 하나님 서울 대전 truly thank you. 부산 광주를 지나 이곳 서울에서 대구, 다시 부산, 한번 말씀 대성을 허락해 주심에 진심으로 감사드리옵나이다 약속의 목자를 통하여 계시록 성취 실상의 말씀이 온 세상에 증거되게 어느 한 사람도 하나님의 역사가 이루어졌음을 듣지 못한 자가 없도록 은혜 내려 주시옵소서 그리고 지금의 시대는 어떠한 때이며 우리가 찾아야 할 구원의 처소는 어디이며 만나야 할 약속의 목자는 누구이며 그를 통해 증거받아야 할 약속의 말씀은 무엇인지를 깨닫는 시간 되게 하여 주시옵소서 하나님께서는 죄악으로 물든 만물을 회복하여 다시금 함께하시고자 천년간 역사에 오셨고 하늘에서 이룬 것 같이 이땅 가운데 새하늘 새하늘을 창조하사 그곳에 하나님과 예수님과 천국임이 오실 것을 약속하셨사옵나이다 하나님의 뜻과 목적이 이루어지는 오늘날 약속대로 새 나라 새 민족 신천지 열두 지파를 땅 가운데 창조하셨으니 성경의 말씀을 길로 삼아 만민이 하나님께로 나오게만 인도하여 주시옵소서 오늘은 특별히 하나님의 복음 전파를 위하여 힘쓰시고 노력하시는 목회자분들이 전국 각처에서 모여 싸움나이다 이 시간 약속의 목자께서 밝히 증거해 주시는 계시록 전장 실상의 말씀을 통해 성도들을 천국으로 인도하는 사명을 받은 목재, 목회자들부터 이 말씀을 깨닫고 계시록을 가감하지 않는 자 되게 하여 주시옵소서 그리고 더 들은 바 말씀을 각 교회 교인들에게 전하여 모든 사람이 하나님의 뜻대로 신앙하고 천국과 구원에 이르도록 them, 인도하여 주시옵소서 하나님도 한 분이시오 예수님도 한 분이시며 성경도 한 분입니다 하나님과 말씀 안에서 하나 되게 하여 주옵시고 말씀 대성회를 통해 모든 영광 아버지 홀로 받아 주시옵소서 모든 지종을 주님께 의탁드리오며 살아계신 예수님의 이름으로 기도드려옵나이다. 아멘. <목소리> 오늘 신천지 열두 집파 십만 수료식에서 수료하는 천 열매 십자는 십만 삼천 칠백. 64명이 되겠습니다. 금년에 또 다시 10만 6천 180명이 되었습니다. 오늘 하나님의 은혜로 두 교회가 협력과 교류를 통해 하나님의 가족이 될수 있으되 
But in Sinchyonji, you oh. are preaching prophecy and you are showing the yeah. fulfillment. Even you are showing the, uh, you know, the testimony of this fulfillment. I changed to Sinchyonji because of the, truth, the word, the truth of the word that is being taught, the revealed word. Shinchanjiga Sarani Everyone enjoyed the video. Sinji Church has passed. Everyone testified. From believers all around the world are coming out to share the word of life. Some churches around the world are changing their name sign to Jesus. Today, we will have another 100,000 graduation ceremony. We will have a special Instructors or give certain video just now. They come to the field. Adventure. Board and give a short time. She's not an instructor. They remember. You learn to build the word really well, and we can use the sermon to confirm that it has this word in the Bible and respond to the word. I'm going to listen to that word.
안녕하십니까. 네, 안녕하십니까. Hello, everyone. 네, 만나 뵙게 되어서 너무나 반갑습니다. 네, 저는 It's a pleasure to meet all of you today. I am a church member of John Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. My name is Lee Tam Mi. At this seminar, I would like to thank all the uh, pastors and uh, theology students for coming and joining this seminar today. At this precious time, although I like in many ways, I'm only a member of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, but I, I'm here to share what I've, what I learned, what I saw and heard. So I'm here standing before you. And also, I'm working as a Secretary of Heavenly Culture, World Peace, and Restoration of Life, which is a non-government peace organization where ch uh, chaired by our chairman. However, I also um, came to Shincheonji, and it changed my life through the revealed word uh, regarding the 66 books of the Bible I have I have understood. So at this time, I'm going to share what I what I have learned. And today, I want to talk about the secret of the kingdom of heaven: the two kinds of seed and harvest. The main reference is Matthew 13 and Revelation 14. First of all, this book of Matthew was recorded about 2,000 years ago, and it was recorded by Matthew, which was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. And in Matthew 13, uh, it talks about two kinds of seed and about the field and many secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And regarding the two kinds of seed, it also talks about harvest that would that will take place. And regarding Matthew 13, many secrets of the kingdom of heaven are recorded, and these secrets are not easy to understand, but they are written in parables. Then why did Jesus talk in parables? The reason is recorded in Matthew 13 as well. And it says, it's be it, it is to hide the secrets of God, these precious secrets, from the enemy and those who belong to the enemy. Also, it was to fulfill the prophecy that was told by an Old Testament prophet. And that prophecy is Psalms 78, verse 2. That is why Jesus spoke in parables. Now, I will, uh, I'll tell you about the two kinds of seed. Why is this seed important first? Uh, let me tell you briefly about that background. If you go to Exodus 19, verse 5 to 6, God made a covenant with Adam, and uh, gave all creation to Adam to, to rule. However, Adam betrayed this covenant with God and forgot to restore everything. God chose His people. And if you go to Exodus 19, God makes a covenant with His physical Israelites, His chosen people. And God says, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That was the covenant. So, the, these chosen people, it would be a great uh, blessing for them. And it's written in Exodus 19, they made this covenant with God. However, when time passed, at the time of King Solomon, 
Uh, many Gentile women were accepted. Not only that, the Gentile, uh, Gentile gods were accepted into Israel, Israel. But God said, you must not have other gods before me, but they did not keep this covenant and ended up committing sin. And God cannot be with His people who committed sin, so He had made a decision. So, to resolve this issue of physical seed that commits sin, God prophesied through Jeremiah that He will create a new thing. Uh, if you go to Jeremiah 31 verse 22, God promises to create a new thing on earth, and that is to create God's people who will not sin anymore. So that was the promise. And during the process, there is the sowing of the two kinds of seed and the new covenant to be established. Then what is the two kinds of seed? In Jeremiah 31, it said that the, in the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the two kinds of seed would be planted. Then that time must come. So God made a promise, and after 600 years later, Jesus came to this earth. And according to this promise of God, Jesus came as the Messiah. Jesus came, and in Matthew 13, Jesus talks about these two kinds of seed. That is the main reference of today. Matthew 13, verse 24, Jesus told another parable. He says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But it would have been great if the good, only the good seed was planted, but you can see that at night, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. But because this is the his field, there must be good seed to, uh, must be planted. However, the, surf the servants uh, realized this and asked the owner, uh, Sir, uh, did you, uh, would you want us to pull up the weeds? What, the owners, what did the owner say? Let, let them be until the harvest. At the time of harvest, the, the wheat will be gathered into the barn, but the weeds will be burned. So in the same field, the two kinds of seed are growing. That was the prophecy made through Jeremiah, Jeremiah, and it was fulfilled through Jesus. In Matthew 13, that fulfillment is explained in Matthew 13. Then, this word is written in parables. So, do you think that Jesus is talking about physical seed and physical farming, pulling out the physical weeds? Do you think that's the case? No, this is parable. So, Jesus also explained to the disciples the true meaning of this. It's from verse 37. Where is the field where the seeds are planted? It is Jesus' field and it's the world. And it says, the good seed, uh, the one who sowed the good seed is the son, son, of, God, son of man. Then, this world is not just uh, the physical world, but it's the world that belongs to Jesus. Also, it says that the harvest is the end of the age. Then, it's not talking about uh, like destruction of the world or destruction of the earth, but just like how first coming, uh, physical Israel came to an end and people had to accept Jesus. Jesus is talking about the end of religious world. Then, in, the, in this world of Jesus, two kinds of seed were sown, and so there are sons of the kingdom and also sons of the evil one in the same field. So why is this important? 
It's because their results are different. That's why these two kinds of seed is an important event. Those born of God's seed will be harvested by God and His angels, and they will be taken into the barn. And there, they will become uh, children of God and shine like the sun. However, the others, the others who are not harvested, are proven to be weeds. Then they remain in the field, and they will be judged. This is what Jesus says. And these, this is not my own interpretation, but this is what Jesus explained at the time of first coming in Matthew 13. So this will happen, and, and that day has to come when this is fulfilled. So at the time of Revela uh, at the time of second coming, there is uh, Revelation 14 that talks about harvest. Why don't we all uh, read Revelation 14, verse 14 to 16 together? I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called out in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he was seated he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Amen. Revelation 14, verse 14 to 16, talks about the angel, the harvester, who comes and reaps, reaps the reaps the harvest. Two kinds of seed were planted, and there are results. So in Revelation 14, uh, the time to reap has come, it says, and it talks about uh, the time of harvest. So who is the harvester? It says it's the angel. So with Jesus, angels do the work of harvesting. Also, it says it's done through a sickle. But it, do you think this is a physical sickle? It would be very terrifying if, if it was a physical sickle. How, however, it's not a physical sickle. God is the Word. Jesus is the Word. And Luke 8, 8, 11 says that seed is also the word. So, those born of God's seed means people who are born again of the word. And they are the ones who are gathered. So, through this sickle, uh, this tool, the word, they are all gathered and harvested into the barn. Then, uh, these people who are gathered, where are, where are they gathered? Matthew 13 says that it's the barn where these wheat people, wheat like people are gathered. And in Revelation 14, this place is called Mount Zion. At this place, Mount Zion, it says that the first fruits are found here. And these are not the uh, old fruits, but they are the First fruits were gathered for the first time at the time of second coming. This kind of event didn't take place before. That's why they're called first fruits. And people who are gathered here are 144,000 gathered at Mount Zion, and they are the 12 tribes. This is written in Revelation 14 and uh, Revelation 7. So regarding this, it's also explained in Revelation chapter 7, regarding these people who are gathered, they are the sealed ones, and they are those who, be who belong to the 12 tribes, and the place where they're gathered is Mount Zion, and it's where God's throne is found. Uh, God's throne is here, and that proof is, is because the word is there and it's where the prophecies have been fulfilled. It's where this word comes out from. So we can see that God is here and Jesus is also here. 
So those born of God's seed are gathered in this place, so they no longer sin, but they are ch true children of God. Two kinds of seed were planted for the, this new creation. So at this time, new creation, new people are created. Then it is also promised in Revelation 21 that God's holy city, New Jerusalem, will come down. And this place where it comes down to, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. There will be, this will be the kingdom of heaven created where God will dwell. This is promised in Revelation 21. And God can dwell here because God's people, born of God's seed, are gathered here. That's why God comes and dwells with them. And regarding this place, those who belong to the 12 tribes of Shinchanji, according to Revelation 7, 14, and Matthew 13, those born of God's seed and harvested and sealed, they are the people whom God is with, and this is where eternal life and heaven are fulfilled. We should be able to understand this. So, to be, har to be born of God's seed, to be harvested, the, all of these things are completely biblical, and these are very important events. So, I hope we understand that. So, as believers, we need to really ask ourselves and confirm who am I according to the Bible? Even if we read the 66 books of the Bible 100 times, if it has nothing to do with me, with myself, then the Bible, eternal life, heaven, God, Jesus, won't have nothing to do with me even if I've carried out my life of faith for a long time. That's what I realized. So, among these two kinds of seed, am I really born of God's seed? Have I been harvested? Where am I? This place, this 12 tribes of God's, uh, the 12 tribes of Shinchanji, uh, is the place created by God and His Word. I hope you could recognize that through the Word. It, it was a short time uh, to talk about the two kinds of seed and harvest regarding Matthew 13 and Revelation 14. I lack in many ways, but um, with love for Jesus and for God, I hope that all of us carry out our life of faith in the true way. Thank you so much. All the pastors here and the congregation members here, how did you think? She's very clear, wasn't she? She's very brave, and she gave a clear testimony. She didn't even look at a verse herself, but just poured out God's word that's from inside her heart. Let's give her a big round of applause for doing a great job in giving this sermon. Our members of Shinchanji, through the promised shepherd whom Jesus sent, we've been sealed with the revealed word. And we take tests every week to make sure that we are sealed and the members, the lay members, are also giving sermons. This is possible because God is here with Shinchanji, and that's why God's word is coming out of the mouth of our members. As you saw it yourself just now, we hope that you will also learn, learn this revealed word well to testify to God's word too. Now, as our main event, we'll have our promised shepherd with us to hear the word of life. Today, he'll give us a lecture on the fulfilled realities of the entire book of Revelation. The book of Revelation 
is a new covenant to be fulfilled at the time of the second coming. It's a very important book where God's will and purpose are, are completed. It says in Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19, that anyone who adds to or subtracts from these words of Revelation will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven, but will be cursed, will receive the plagues written in this book. That's why it's a content that any believer who hopes to go to heaven must know. But we can see in Revelation 5 that the book of Revelation was sealed with seven seals that no one in heaven or on earth could open it or look inside it or understand it. But as Jesus took the seal scroll, seal book from God, and he opened the seals and fulfilled the prophecies written, written in the book, and that is how the reality of Revelation appeared on earth. And there, someone was promised to be sent as Jesus' messenger to testify to, testify to everything that he's seen and heard. And this is the promised shepherd of the New Testament that we must meet. Chairman Lee Mani of Shinchanji Church of Jesus, according to these words of promise, he received and ate the open book of Revelation 10 in Revelation 10, and a scene in Revelation 22 verse 8, that he is the only shepherd who seen and heard everything at the location of the fulfillment of Revelation. And a scene in Revelation 22 verse 16, he is sent as Jesus' messenger to testify to, testify to all he has seen and heard for the churches. Please listen to his testimony yourself today. I hope we can all clearly perceive the words of Revelation and even the fulfilled realities of those words. Now let's welcome up Chairman Lee Man Hee, who will give us the highest truth of all humanity. Let's give him a big round of applause. Greetings to everyone. Good to see you. Here at Yongdengpo, I'm here to meet all, all of you pastors and share the word with you. That was my thought in mind, and I believe that all of you are here. Uh, thank you so much for your hard work. God and Jesus, what did they say to, uh, what did they tell us to believe in this Bible? Uh, it would be nice if we could uh, understand that. Isn't that correct? If we go back to the past, think about the first coming of Jesus, how did Jesus come to this earth and appear? It is already prophesied in the Old Testament Bible. But why couldn't believers at the time believe in Jesus? It was because they were ignorant of the Bible. If they understood the Bible, then they wouldn't have denied Jesus or not believe him. But this Bible became just a just a book and, and the people had, did not have much interest in the book. But that was now in the past. And Jesus came and he, uh, he made another promise in the New Testament Bible. In the book of Revelation, what did Jesus promise? That's a very important matter for us. And if we don't believe in this new covenant, and if we just live on, then we won't be able to make it into the kingdom of heaven, and we will end up in this place what we do not desire to be in. It says that it is like the time of Noah. How many people did, uh, got saved at the time of Noah? So many others could not reach salvation. 
That's what happened at the time of Noah. If you read the New Testament, Jesus says the time, the time of the end will be like the time of Noah and the time of Lot. So we shouldn't just read that passage, but if we are living in that time, then we need to believe in God's promise so that we can be saved. People back then who didn't believe have nothing to do with us, but today, regarding this new covenant, if we can't believe in this new covenant, then we will also become like those in the past. We will make the same mistake. Instead of saying, I'm right, you're wrong, you're, you're a cult, you're heresy, that's unnecessary. That is not necessary. If we look at the whole Bible, then you see those who persecute others all belong to Satan. Those who were sent by God were always persecuted in each era. Seeing this, we should never uh, persecute others. If there's something, if there's a wrongdoing, then we should meet and, and talk about it based on the Bible and become a righteous person who, who corrects someone's wrongdoing in that way. So I had this thought in mind, people refuse to meet me or talk to me, they, they always persecute me. So that's what I thought in mind, but I uh, thought about it again, that among many people, uh, God showed me this book, Revelation, that if I just stay quiet and don't talk about it, then what will happen? Then I thought, oh, if I stay quiet, then I'll be cursed before God. So that is why I went out. Uh, I thought I should go out and testify to this word. When Revelation is fulfilled, then it is finished. There is no other book after that. Revelation is fulfilled, then it's finished. In the Old Testament, prophecies were made. Jesus came at the first coming and fulfilled all the prophecies. But there weren't many who believed in him. And also today, we shouldn't do the same thing. We have to hear, listen, and verify. Instead of just persecuting others, but we have to verify with the Bible. Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 talks about Jesus. Uh, Jesus says that even if they come, even if they come in His name, uh, we shouldn't believe them easily. Uh, we have to knock on the knock on it and then co confirm and verify. Why? It's not just God who's there, but there's also the other spirit, Satan. Because there are two kinds of spirits. We need to we need to check and only believe in in God and what belongs to God. Especially today, Revelation is this last book in the Bible, and in terms of the pages, it's only 13 pages in the book. And in this book, uh, Jesus says a very important thing, Revelation 22, verse 18 to 19. It says, if you add or take away from this book of Revelation, then you cannot enter heaven, but you will be cursed. Then, uh, we cannot enter heaven if we add or subtract from this book. Then we need to understand it. We must not add or subtract it. We must not know it, but we should know about it. 
It's not just uh, just a small punishment, but but it will be eternal punishment by God in hell. That would be eternal suffering. That is why we need to understand this word. However, who who will explain everything to us, right? Who will who will explain everything to us clearly? I was a veteran who fought in the Korean War at the front, front line. It wasn't a, a war between Korea and another country, but it was a civil war. So at the front line, I fought and then I survived from the war. Um, those of you who fought in the Korean War would know how fierce it was. It was a foolish war. Those who fought in the war would know. In, be in between the two mountains, in the valley, the two sides fought. They fought with their guns. Our side also fired guns and bullets, and the enemy side would also fire guns. So do you think it would be easy even for a blade of grass to survive in that situation? That was this foolish war, a civil war. And at the front line, I fought and I survived. At that time, I wasn't a believer. I wasn't a person of faith. I was only a farmer. So after being dispatched, uh, after being discharged from the military, I went back to the countryside and I prayed to God. Every evening, I prayed, thanking God. I didn't know about God. But after surviving from that kind of tragic situation, I, I thank God in prayer. But uh, something happened, it wasn't a dream or it wasn't, it wasn't a vision. I thought to myself that a star came, but it, when it came, it didn't look like a star, it was a great light. It was so bright, I couldn't look directly. So in that field, uh, we built a house where my father and I lived and worked. So I was so surprised and ran into the house, woke up my father, and I told him, Father, the star came. But it wasn't a star, it was really great light. So my father came out and saw it. He was he was very surprised too. He said, "That star is so bright and big." And that star came to me for three nights. And by that star, I started to walk on the life of faith. I, before then, I didn't go to a church or a theology school or was evangelized. But that's how I started my faith. And I have continued on until this point. And regarding this book of Revelation, it's, uh, I, I considered it very importantly other, uh, than other books too. And that's, that's only because Revelation 22, 18, 19 says that if you add or subtract from this book, you cannot enter heaven, but you will uh, be cursed. Jesus is not someone who who would make a joke about this or lie about this. At the time of Noah, there were many people, but these people didn't listen to Noah. So in the end, Noah's word wasn't a lie, but there was really God's judgment. So in the New Testament, it says that time of the end will be like the time of Noah, that today, the time of today is going to be like the time of Noah. So people continue to get married, 
they they live their normal lives and that's because this takes place in the religious world but the uh, but the outside it's the same so uh, Jesus said that this there will be the end of the world Matthew 24, verse 30 to 31 says, First of all, Matthew 24 is talking about the temple of God, and there is war happening in this temple, and God's family lost the battle. That's why uh, those, who drew, those who destroyed Jerusalem are standing in the holy place. So God's church, uh, His kingdom and people all came to an end and became the possession of Satan. And in that time, verse 30 and 31, Jesus comes with his angels and gathers people from the four winds. It says, the chosen people uh, of the previous era comes to an end. Then Jesus and his angels come and gather people from the four winds. And the same thing is recorded in Matthew 8, verse 11 to 12. Uh, I'm sure believers are familiar with this passage. It says, subjects of the kingdom, the subjects of the kingdom are thrown outside into the darkness and they're not, are weeping there. But those who come from the east and west, they sit in the kingdom of heaven. So who are these people coming from the east and west? And who are the subjects of the kingdom? It's a matter we should think about. So, this Bible is what we believers need. Jesus came to the earth and he even sacrificed his own life and, it, and this sh must not be a lie. It's, be it's only because we, we are lacking and we don't understand, but Jesus told the truth. Yes, that is right. So who are the people coming from the east and west and, and those who are, who are thrown outside, what happened to them? What's the reason? Then in the Bible, there should be an explanation for this. So we think about this matter. Uh, we'll have to go to Revelation 21. Uh, Revelation 22, verse 18 to 19. If we add or subtract, we cannot enter heaven and we'll be cursed. So we should think about this. Who am I? Who am I according to this Bible? Who am I in this Bible? In this New Testament? Have I been created according to this New Testament Bible? Isn't that a matter we should think about? Instead of, instead of boasting of ourselves, we need to think about this matter. Yes, that is right. If you add or subtract this book, we cannot enter heaven. So, the, this New Testament Bible is the book that we have to know and keep. We can't just curse and persecute others. Ever since there was God's work, Satan's people always persecuted this work. Even, uh, even in the New Testament, Jesus talks about this, talks about the persecution. So it, it's not it's not right to to persecute others in, without understanding the Bible. It would be better to meet and correct their wrongdoings. How could a believer persecute and curse others? That's not the right thing a believer should do. So I thought, oh, I would be punished by God if I stay quiet. I'm, I'm nobody. I was just a farmer. 
And if God, if God showed me all, all the chapters 1 to 22 of Revelation, and God told me to go to the churches and testify, if you go to Revelation 22, 16, uh, there is the instruction to go to the churches and testify. And verse 6 says, I, John, who have seen all these things. And this person who saw all these things are told, is told to go to the churches and testify. So if I just stay quiet, then I wouldn't be, I wouldn't hear insults from others, but then I wouldn't carry out my duty. Instead, I would go against it. If I, do, if I was told to go to the churches and testify, and if I don't do it, then that's not the right thing. Then what would Jesus do? Jesus gave that instruction, but if, if I don't carry it out, what would Jesus do? But if I go to the churches, do you think they will accept me? Think about that. No, they don't accept me. They, they call me a cult and kick me out. Don't you think so? I, I know that pastors are gathered here. Please ask yourself. Wouldn't you do that too? You would, you would say, oh, you arrogant one, what, why, why are you here? Go out. Even if I saw and heard these things, I was told to go to the churches and testify, but the churches wouldn't accept me, so that's a problem. Ever since Adam committed sin, over the 6,000 years, everyone sent by God, is there anyone re who returned safely? No, everyone was killed. Then in this world, what kind of world, which spirit is governing this world? We, we can know that. Instead of looking at others, we have to look at ourselves and look at the Bible. That's the matter. And I was very uh, frustrated. This book of Revelation, um, it is written that there is no one on earth or in heaven who could look inside this book. Regarding this book, you can see in Revelation chapter 5 that God has this scroll in his right hand sealed with seven seals. So who, look, who looked at it? It says, one being, one person saw all the chapters, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and the scroll is sealed with seven seals in the right hand of God. It says uh, that there's no one in heaven or on earth who could look inside it, so, uh, so the, this person wept. Who's, who who wept? The person who saw this. And he's the one who saw all the chapters from chapter 1 to 22 of Revelation. So this person who saw, uh, he saw God, Jesus, and the scroll, and he wept. And Jesus comes and then takes the scroll. Then from chapter 6, he begins to open the seals one by one. Then, when each seal is opened, every time, uh, the events take place. White horse, red horse come out, uh, pale horse come out, black horse come out. So every time the seal is opened, these events take place. So this person saw the horses so he would know. And also, Revelation 2 and 3, there are seven messengers. Jesus came with the seven stars in his hand, and he appointed them as messengers of the seven churches. Who, who did? Jesus did. Jesus came with the seven stars and appointed them. And these seven messengers, did they work well? They committed sin, actually. And why did they commit sin? Why? 
If you read Revelation 2 and 3, uh, these seven messengers were appointed, but Satan's pastors, Nicolaitans, came into them and they fed their own food and they taught their own things. So now the seven messengers accepted and learned those teachings from the Satan's pastors. So even if they had to follow Jesus' word and instructions, they committed sin following Satan's words. So what would Jesus do? Because this happened, it was Jesus. It was Jesus who appointed the seven messengers. But Satan's pastors, Nicolaitans, came in and fed with their own food, their teachings. And third, Jesus chooses another person in chapter 1. And Jesus introduces himself to that person he chose. Jesus says, oh, I am the living one, I was dead, and I'm alive. And, and that being was a spiritual body. And he introduces himself to the person he chose. And through that person, Jesus instructs him to send letters to the seven messengers so that they can repent. And if these words are fulfilled as they are, then letters should be actually sent. There has to be the reality of these words. So the letters were sent to them. What happens next? Jesus from heaven tells the person who sent the letters, come up here. After what kind of event? After sending the letters. Jesus tells him, come up here. And, and so he goes up. What does he see? He sees the throne of God and he hears the voice from the throne. And he hears that the throne of God will come to this earth. And in, verse, uh, in chapter 5, in the right hand of God, there is the scroll sealed with seven seals. And the Lamb, Jesus, comes and takes the scroll. Then from chapter 6, he opens the seals one by one. There was no one in heaven or on earth who could do that, but Jesus comes and takes a scroll. And who saw this event? It's the person who was chosen in chapter 1, John. He sees everything. So he sees this event. So Jesus opens the seals one by one. Every time the white horse red horse, all these horses come out. And there's one thing. When the seals are broken, uh, when the seals are opened, there are the martyrs. The martyrs who ask, uh, ask Jesus to avenge their blood. And, and they say, how long do we have to wait? And then Jesus says, wait a little longer. And that is avenged. Uh, Jesus said, wait a little longer. And then, uh, in chapter 6, the sun, moon, and stars are darkened and fall. That's another event that happens. And what are these sun, moon, and stars? According to Genesis 37, Jacob's family is likened to sun, moon, and stars. If that's the case, then... This word should be a parable. That this, then this event in Revelation six, is this talking about? Is this talking about chosen people who betrayed or the destroyers? You can see that they are the chosen people who betray. It's not the Gentiles who destroy. Uh, in Revelation 4, there are the four living creatures uh, around the throne of God. They are the heavenly army. And Jesus uses the four living creatures to judge the chosen people who betrayed in chapter 6. The sun, moon, and stars are in the sky. The fact that they 
are darkened and they fall means the chosen people who betrayed Israel is called sun, moon, and stars in Genesis 37. So the sun, moon, and stars are darkened and they fall. That's the judgment against the chosen people who betrayed. Also in Matthew 24, the Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem is also, uh, also destroyed. And the leaders uh, are likened to some moon and stars, and it also says in Matthew 24 that they are darkened and they fall. After that happens, Jesus comes with his angels and, har and gather people and harvest people. Then everyone, uh, in Matthew chapter 13, Verse, verse 39 talks about harvest. It talks about the seed of God and the seed of Satan. And the time of harvest is the end of the age. It says, it's the end, end of the end of the world. But it's not the end of the planet Earth. So we need to understand the Bible. We can't just say this and that carelessly, but we have to check and verify with the Bible. So the harvest, time of harvest is the end of the age. So why is there this kind of judgment? There is God's seed and Satan's seed planted in the same field of Jesus, growing together. In other words, God's seed and Satan's seed are growing together in the church of Jesus. So they fight, they argue. Why is that? It's because Jesus comes for the second time and Jesus takes the those born of God's seed, but those born of the Satan's seed will remain in the field. And that field is the field of Jesus. It's the church of Jesus. Everything has a meaning in the Bible. So in, in the field of Jesus, in the church of Jesus, some people might say that's, that's not right, but it's what it says in the Bible. So there is the field of Jesus, God's seed and Satan's seed are planted in the same field and they grow together. And at the time of harvest, those born of God's seed are harvested, but those born of the Satan's seed are remaining in the field. And seeing this, uh, now those born of God's seed and those born of Satan's seed are separated. So they are clearly, clearly separated. The Bible is telling us this and we need to understand it. This is what the Bible tells us. We might think just reading the Bible will give us grace, but that's, that's not right. We have to have understanding of the Bible. We have to understand each and every word. If we don't, if we don't understand, then we have to ask others to find that understanding. So two kinds of seed are planted into the same field. Then uh, there is harvest taking place, and it says the time of harvest is the end of the age. People might say uh, terrifying things that it's the end of the world, end of the planet Earth, but we need to be able to explain that it's the end of the age according to the Bible. That's what the Bible says. There is a time to sow the seed, there's a time to harvest. And when we learn math, there's plus, minus, equal, we, we have all these formulas to find the answer. Just like that, we, sh we have to find the clear explanation and understanding according to the Bible, without telling a lie. 
Jesus would be uh, Jesus would have been very frustrated at the time because people didn't believe him. And Jesus prophesied the New Testament. So Jesus must be fully prepared to explain everything. So Matthew 24 talks about war, this fighting, two kinds of seed were planted. If, if a seed is planted in good soil, then it would bear uh, many crops, 30 times, 60 times, and 100 times. But it, uh, it doesn't bear fruit in every type of field. There are also uh, along the path, a seed planted along the path, the thorny field, the all these other fields too. But in the good soil, the seed will bear many, many fruits, many crops. This is what Jesus also explained. Jesus chose the 12 disciples and Jesus said, you are clean by the words I've spoken to you. And Jesus said, uh, you can bear many fruits, but the branch that does not bear fruit will be cut, cut off. Is Jesus talking about apples and these physical fruits? No. Jesus is talking about spiritual fruit, evangelizing people. But if, uh, if you don't bear fruit, then you should bear fruit. And then um, cleanse yourself so that you can bear fruit. So we have to use this word in a good way, not in a bad way. Today, what I, uh, what I want to tell you is about God's promise. It's God's promise. Jesus promised all the chapters of Revelation, and when the time comes, Jesus uh, fulfilled every everything as it is written without adding or subtracting. But when he fulfills it, there is someone who sees and hears all the chapters from 1 to 22 of Revelation. It says in Revelation 22, 8, I, John, who have seen all these things. And, and John is told to go to the churches and testify. But if, even if he goes to the churches, he, he will get he will hear insults and be rejected. However, uh, someone who saw and heard these things should testify to what he saw and heard. If he, uh, he shouldn't testify other things. Because he saw revelation being fulfilled when he testifies, then, then he would testify about the reality, reality of these words. Without the reality, uh, it wouldn't be necessary to talk about what happened in the past or what's going to happen in the future, but the person should see the reality, the fulfillment of the prophecies and testify to that fulfillment. If not, it, it would just be talking about uh, prophecies, and the prophecies are already written in the Bible. When it's fulfilled, then there are there are the realities, not just one or two, but all the realities of Revelation 1 to 22. If this person saw those realities, he would be able to testify to it. And because there are the realities as evidence, uh, people cannot re people cannot lie anymore. And uh, if this person saw the messengers in chapter 2 and 3, he would know their faces, he would know their names, he would know what they did, their actions. Uh, you know, if he saw everything, and regarding the seven messengers and the Nicolaitans, the Satan's pastors, 
If the person saw all their actions, they would, he would know. He would know their faces, how they look like, their names. But if I tell you their names, then I would be I would be sued uh, for defamation because that's the law. There is the law of defamation. But if I if I tell them uh, the names of the destroyers, uh, they it wouldn't they wouldn't be happy to hear that. So. I cannot tell you their uh, names openly, but but I can tell you that uh, there are destroyers promised in the Bible, and that's and they appeared and they did their actions. So Revelation two, three, five, and six, I talked, I told you about, and then in chapter in chapter seven, after the event of chapter six, uh, chapter seven says after this, and there's the work of sealing. And also in at the beginning of chapter four, it says after this, after sending the letters. In chapter 2 and 3, chapter 4 takes place. So uh, the expression after this shows the relationship between what happens before and after. So chapter 6, chosen people who betray came to an end. Then in chapter 7, a new people, new kingdom of God should be created. So that's why in chapter 7, uh, people are sealed. There is the work of sealing. Uh, and the seal is God's word. And it's to seal God's word into some, someone's heart. Whether it's one month or a year that the word is sealed, uh, you will be able to verify whether the person is sealed or not through an exam. Have you all taken an exam? After sealing, uh, there, the 12 tribes are created. It's 12,000 for each tribe. So pastors, which tribe do you belong to? Uh, please tell me which tribe you belong to. In Revelation, after the event of 6, in chapter 7, there are people who are sealed and they are the 12 tribes. It's not just 12 people, but there are 12 tribes. Please look, look those behind me. There are 12 people sitting behind me, right? Uh, they're not here uh, for other reasons, but it's for testimony. And the 12 people, it, it's the 12 who are sealed. What does it mean to be sealed? It's, it means that the word of revelation is sealed into their hearts. It's sealed into their hearts. That means to be sealed. Uh, you saw earlier, the secretary, Chanmi, a young lady who came out and uh, talked about the Bible. You, you heard her, right? She was able to talk about the Bible because it was in her heart. It was, it's, that's what it means to be sealed. All the chapters of Revelation are recorded in the person. That's why that person is sealed. And those people with that word sealed into their hearts are the sealed ones. Then that person could go anywhere and uh, teach, teach with that word in their hearts. Isn't that right? If the word is, if the word is uh, written in their hearts, then they become the walking Bible, just like Jesus. Jesus didn't come from heaven with the, with the physical Bible, right? So those who are sealed, how many are they in each tribe? There are 12,000 for each tribe. And there are 12 tribes, so together it's 144,000. 
So they are the sealed. Uh, if they claim to be sealed, then you have to ask them, oh, which, which tribe do you belong to? They should belong to one of the 12 tribes. We can't be arrogant or boast, boastful. Saying uh, that I'm I've been sealed. I'm I'm one of the twelve tribes. Uh, why don't Why don't we take an exam on the Book of Revelation? At Shincheonji Church of Jesus, we take many exams, and that is so that we can uh, we can check on ourselves whether we really have the words written in our hearts. And it, and if you don't pass this exam, you cannot become an evangelist or an instructor. So in order to become the walking Bible, this word has to be sealed into our hearts. Though only those people are the 144,000. It's not those who are not sealed, but those who are sealed. And with the word that's sealed into their hearts, they are the 144,000. And that is 12,000 for each tribe, altogether 144,000. And there has to be all 144,000 if that's the promise. So in chapter 7, because in chapter 6, one era, this first heaven and first earth passed away, all the sun, moon, and stars are darkened and they fall, they come to an end. And they were the chosen people. It's not the destroyers, but the uh, the chosen people who betrayed. And because they came to an end, new people are created in chapter 7 through the work of sealing. That is 12,000 people in each tribe. They are the new people of God who are sealed. And chapter 8 and 9 are uh, chapter 8 and 9 um, chosen people who are driven out in chapter 6 are, are killed in chapter 8 and 9. And it's not talking about physical death, but it is talking about uh, the, their spiritual, spiritual death. Word is life, right? And that is what it's talking about. Then let's go to chapter 10. It says that Jesus, uh, Jesus takes the scroll from the right hand of God in chapter 5. He opens the seals in chapter 6. Because all the seals are open, the scroll is completely open. Before, it was sealed with seven seals completely, but now that Jesus opened all the seals, it would be opened. So the angel takes that open scroll and gives it to a person so that he can eat it. He's that person who sent the letters in chapter 2 and 3. And he's John. He, he receives the scroll and he eats, eats it. So this book is no longer in the hand of God or in Jesus or, or in the hand of angel. In chapter 10, it's inside the stomach of the person who ate that book. It should be in the stomach of that person. It, this scroll started in the right hand of God, but in the end, in chapter 10, it's now in the stomach of the person who ate the scroll. If that person is John, then it would be in the stomach of John. And he's told, go, go to the nations, languages, and kings, and peoples to, to testify to the word. So now that the person has the word inside of, his, inside of him, he can go and testify. So while testifying in chapter 11, he gets killed. But even so, after three days, uh, it says that he, he comes back to life. And af after this process, there is a war, fighting amongst themselves. 
If it was just one spirit, there wouldn't be any war, but because there are two kinds of spirits, there is a war between them. One belongs to God and the other belongs to Satan. Because there is this word, then this event must take place. This event must take place as a reality. So it has continued up to chapter 11. And it is also written in chapter 11 that the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. That means God wins victory. After the war, God wins. That is why the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus says, uh, if you overcome, I'll give you these blessings. So there, it, there was a lot of difficulty until the moment uh, God wins his victory. Uh, in chapter 12, there is a woman. Uh, in the Bible, there are different kinds of women. One is a bad woman and the other is a good woman. And what, what is this woman that the Bible is talking about? It's not talking about a uh, physical woman. What the Bible is saying is, is, a, is a spiritual woman who receives God's seed and uh, gives birth to believers. So a pastor is likened to a, a woman, a spiritual woman. And children would be also spiritual children. That is why the Bible talks in this way. Please think about this, everyone. So it's not, it's not a physical woman. And it says a woman uh, gives birth to a child. And, and it says it's a ch male child and his brothers. So he has brothers too. And in chapter 12, it says that the dragon comes into God's kingdom. That's what happens in chapter 13. The dragon comes in and, and wins the battle and, and takes control of the, ta of the tabernacle. But in chapter 12, the male child fights and overcomes the dragon. So the dragon is kicked out. This dragon who came, into, who came in from the sea, now the dragon is kicked out. So the dragon is so, it must be so furious for losing this kingdom. Even in Matthew 24, the chosen people lost the war, so that is why the destroyers are standing in the holy place. It's the same thing. The destroyers also be, uh, came in and ruled over the tabernacle, but after the war in chapter 12, the dragon is driven out. And and then it says, now have come God's kingdom and salvation. You know, there are many events and seminars and conferences. Everyone is saying, I'm saved, you're saved, we're all saved. But, but where, where is the word? Where is the word? Why, why, would, why should we talk carelessly? Saying, oh, we're saved, we're all saved. But, but the, wouldn't that be wouldn't that belong to the devil? We have to look at the Bible and talk. In the in Revelation, after that war, after winning the war against Satan and his crew, it says, "Now have come God's salvation and kingdom." And the woman, uh, woman flees, that's what it says, and the male child and his brothers fight against the dragon with their lives. They fight with their lives, with, and then they won, they overcame. So the dragon is driven out, and you know, in chapter 2 and 3, all the blessings were promised uh, for those who overcome, so they will receive those blessings. And in chapter 12, there is the one who overcomes. And the dragon lost, so he's, uh, they're driven out. They're driven out of the kingdom of God. This is what happens in chapter 12. So we know uh, 
what kind of people appeared and uh, what kind of actions they did, we should know this. We can truly believe when we truly understand. We need to understand in order to believe. Now we go to chapter 13. Chapter 12 and 13 take place in the same location. The dragon's group, that, uh, the beast with seven heads and ten horns that came in from the sea, they devour the kingdom of God. And in chapter 12, Satan's organization comes to an end. Uh, so, this is how it was recorded, but it doesn't mean that the, the events will take place in this order, in the same order. You know uh, who Solomon was? He was a king in Israel, but he worshipped other gods. Because he worshipped other gods, so, uh, God took the kingdom from Solomon, and uh, there is also the beast that comes from the earth. He, he receives authority from the beast that comes from the sea, and he rules with the, with the number 666. And this number 666 uh, is the number that Solomon had, and Solomon betrayed. Just like that, the beast that came out from the earth, uh, this, this beast became one with the beast from the sea, and ruled with the authority received from the beast. So, that is why he receives this title, 666. He acted like Solomon. Uh, I, I will tell you uh, all the details when we uh, on, on the other day. But today, uh, I'm running out of time, so I cannot tell you all the details. I have a long way to go. So in chapter 14, uh, it's very different from chapter 13. 13 is where Satan's group comes in and devours God's kingdom, but in chapter 14 it's different. It's talking about the first fruits. Uh, they are the first fruit born of the seed planted by Jesus, and they are uh, gathered in Mount Zion. They're singing the new song. And it says, only them, they can sing the new song. Who are these people gathered in Mount Zion? They are the sealed 144,000 in chapter 7. They are the 144,000 who are sealed. And they sing the new song. What is this new song? The Bible existed for a long time. But in the Bible, there are many things people talk about about the Bible, and, it's, and they're, they're not correct. But the person who saw and heard everything in everything would have a correct testimony. And that is that would be the new song. It's not just the prophecies of Revelation, but the fulfillment. The fulfillment of the of the prophecies. So that would be the new song. And it says that they these uh, these people sang the new song. In chapter 12, they are the victorious ones, the, uh, those who overcame, and they received the seven bowls in chapter 15, and these bowls are filled with God's wrath, and these bowls are for judgment of God. And in chapter 15, it says, all nations come to worship God. Why are they coming to, uh, why are all the nations coming to this place in chapter 15? It's because in verse 5, it says that there is a temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. What are they testifying? They testify the events of Revelation. 
So the, those who overcame, those who overcame in chapter 12, are, are appear in chapter 15. So this is the place where those who overcame are gathered. That means God will be here. with them. That's why all nations are uh, coming to, to worship God. What kind of place is this? It says it's the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. What are they testifying about? The events of Revelation. How? How are they able to testify? Because they saw and heard the events. That's why they're able to testify. Even if someone wants to testify, they can't if they didn't see anything. But these people saw and heard the events, so that's why they're able to testify. All the events of Revelation have been fulfilled, then uh, they saw and heard these events, that's why they're able to testify. Everyone? Uh, shouldn't you also come to these people and listen to their, their testimony? Right? Be those who actually saw and heard the events? Yes, we should. I am the one who sent the letters in chapter 2 and 3 of Revelation. And, and the person who sent the letters is the one who saw the events of Revelation. Let's not become fools. If we, uh, we should become believers that God wants, that Jesus wants. If God tells us to go this way, we shouldn't go the other way. We have to follow His direction, His instruction. Many people lost their lives to, to give us this Bible today. This Bible is a very precious book. Many lives were lost and sacrificed for this one book. Then we have to consider it precious. In chapter 15, there are those with the bulls, those who overcame, and they give judgment in chapter 16. So, there are the betrayers and the destroyers in, in chapter 6. Bowls are poured out on them to, to judge them. So, that means betrayers and destroyers were judged in that place. The, through the, those who overcame, bowls were poured out onto chapter 16. So what's inside of the bowls is the word of testimony inside of those bowls. It's the Bible. After that, now it's chapter 17, there is the prostitute. And some people might think that it's a physical woman, but it's not. It's a pastor likened to a woman. Just like how a woman gives birth to a child, a pastor gives birth to believers and nurture them. That's why uh, this parable is used. And this woman is a prostitute in chapter 17. And she, she gives wine of adulteries to, to others. And what does it say on her forehead? It says Babylon. Babylon is the kingdom of demons. If you read Daniel's, uh, there's Babylon, and it's a kingdom of demons. The prostitute is sitting on the seven heads and ten horns. And the seven heads and ten horns are those who entered into God's tabernacle in chapter 13. And they're the, those who destroy God's people there. They're the seven heads and ten horns. And on top of them, there is the prostitute sitting. So you could see her as the leader of, the, of their organization. So it talks about the seven heads and ten horns. And the prostitute gives her kingdom to, to them in the end. But, but either way, 
Babylon, it's, it's still Babylon, and it's the kingdom of demons. Then it's chapter 18. Uh, so a lot of time has passed now. But we don't get uh, these many opportunities, so let's continue on a little bit more. Regarding 17, the prostitute is sitting on the seven heads and ten horns. And the seven heads and ten horns came into the tabernacle of heaven and destroyed it. So they, uh, we should be able to know uh, who belongs to God and who belongs to Satan. Now, in chapter 18, uh, I'll tell you about this later again, but 18 is about Babylon. And Babylon made all nations fall down. So Jesus gives judgment upon Babylon. It's not through men, but, but God judges Babylon directly on his, uh, on, by himself. So uh, Babylon can no longer uh, get, have spiritual marriage. That all comes to an end. Their organization comes to an end. So then the devil cannot, cannot work. But that part hasn't been fulfilled yet. Uh, Revelation has been fulfilled up to chapter 17. So um, I've, I've come up to this point very fast, but I can give a full one-hour lecture using the chalkboard for each chapter. But I can do that because of time right now. In chapter 18, cha that part in chapter 18 hasn't been fulfilled yet, but Revelation has been fulfilled up to chapter 17. I saw it, so I know, but uh, Revelation 18 will take place. It hasn't been fulfilled yet. Then in chapter 19, at the beginning, it says, after this. And there is the spiritual marriage of uh, flesh, flesh and spirit coming together as one. That means spirits have to come and spirits become one with us. That is marriage. It's not, it's not physical marriage, but it's marriage of spirit and flesh. And that takes place after the event of chapter 18. That is why at the beginning it says, after this. And this is referring to the event of chapter 18, and it hasn't been fulfilled yet. It's been fulfilled up to 17. So when 18 is fulfilled, I'll tell you about it when it's fulfilled with the reality. And 19 is about marriage, spirit and flesh coming together as one. Then God will come to this earth and God will reign. Not through, it's not through any pastor, but it's God ruling himself, reigning on this earth. What about us flesh? What about us flesh believers? Uh, we can unite with the spirits as in marriage. And that kind of world is fulfilled in chapter 19. But this, this wedding banquet is not, it's not flesh, but it's the marriage of flesh and spirit. And after the marriage, in chapter 20, they enter into first resurrection. So the living ones enter into the first resurrection with Jesus. We lived as flesh, but, but after, after this, uh, we live as spiritual bodies eternally. We can't live eternally with our physical bodies, right? And there's a saying, life and death and the fortunes are all up to heaven. So it's all, it's all dependent on heaven. 
chapter 18 has to be fulfilled first, then 19 is fulfilled. When 19 is fulfilled, there is the first resurrection. If you go to chapter 21, what does it say? It says, first heaven and first earth pass away, and there is the new heaven and new earth. There, God and the holy city New Jerusalem will come down upon to. God has been working up to this point to fulfill revelation through his angels. So after fulfilling everything, God and the holy city will come down. And they will come to new heaven and new earth. First heaven and first earth pass away first, according to chapter 6. They have to pass away. Then, uh, those people without sin waiting for God, God will come to them. God will come to this new heaven and new earth. And God will dwell in that tabernacle together. It says in verse 6, it is done. John 19.30 says, uh, it is finished, which means all the Old Testament is finished. Likewise, in Revelation 21, 6, it says it is done, which means the New Testament is all fulfilled. Then in Revelation 22, from the throne of God, the water of life, clear as crystal flowing, is flowing from the throne down the middle of the street, and then there is the tree that bears 12 crops of fruit every month. Uh, please look how many crops, how, how many kinds of crops there are. There are to, to, to bear 12 crops of fruit, then there has to be 12 branches. It's a place that bears fruit every month. Is there any other place than Shincheonji? Shincheonji bears fruit every month. How? Through the 12 branches. So what kind of tree is this tree? It's the tree of life, it says. This tree of life bears 12 crops of fruit. That is the tree of life. So what kind of people will God create us? God will create, create us into com, uh, to complete beings. It's just the beginning now. But Revelation has been fulfilled up to chapter 17. We still have a few chapters left. In chapter 22, this tree that bears fruit uh, every month, 12 crops of fruit, is the tree of life. But, but go, go out into the world. Is there any other place other than Shincheonji that bears fruit every month, 12 crops of fruit? The tree, uh, a person is likened to a tree. Jesus also called himself the true vine. So everyone who gather here, this is not the end, but I hope we meet and talk. God is one, the Bible is one. Why should we argue and fight in God? There's no reason for that. If we, should, we should talk and, and explain to one another. We have to love even our enemies. Uh, instead of uh, instead of accusing others, it is written you have to forgive others for your sins to be forgiven. You have to forgive other sins in order for your sins to be forgiven. So we should stop fighting. And like Jesus said, let's love one another. If we believe in God, we should love our enemies too. This is what we pray in Lord's Prayer. We say, uh, forgive our sins as we have forgiven others. If we truly mean that, we should really forgive others. Because this is, this is what we pray in Lord's Prayer. And then in verse 15, you, you have to forgive others for you, for you to be forgiven as well. And we should keep this word.
Yes, we should keep this word. So let's meet, uh, have exchange phone calls. If we don't know something, we can teach others, each other. We can't just um, live in a, in a worldly ways because we are, uh, that can't be a true believer. God gave us his own, one and only son. Jesus sacrificed his own life for us. With that kind of love, let's all become one. In the Bible, in God's word, let's become one. Yes, that's what we should do. And uh, regarding Revelation, it's a book that prophesied prophesizes about the future and there and when it's fulfilled there has to be the reality so we should compare it to the bible and if, if it's really true we should believe it now that we believe in god and it says god's seed is the word let's all become god's family born of god's seed love one another and live eternally together thank you so much everyone 네, 우리 귀한 말씀 전해주신 우리 초 회장님께 다시 한번 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. Our chairman who gave us such precious words, let's give him another big round of applause. 네, 말씀에 많은 은혜 받으셨습니까? 예, 정말 계시로 Do you feel much of God's grace from His words today? 한장한장 꼭꼭 씹어서 From chapters 1 to 22 of the entire book of Revelation, he went through it in detail. 정말 목사님을 너무나 사랑하는 So that everyone here, the pastors and the and the, all the believers could digest it and could truly feel the heart of the shepherd. I think God, let us be one. And by following the word, I hope all of us will get to heaven. In the 6,000 years of God's work, the most important time is today when God's new covenant, Revelation, is fulfilled. God's family, His New kingdom and, and people of the 12 tribes are created. And here is where God, Jesus, and heaven come down. And this is how the entire book of the Bible is fulfilled. Then what should we do at this time for us to be saved? First, we must be born of God's seed. We must be harvested. Third, we must be sealed with the revealed word. And fourth, we must belong to the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom. Just like that, only those who have been created according to the promises of Revelation can be saved. Let us confirm ourselves who we are according to Revelation and if we have been created according to the word. Let's perceive, believe, and keep Revelation, which is a new covenant, and be the family of heaven who receive God's great blessings. Now to all the pastors who are here searching for the truth, I'd like to introduce you the education that you can learn the greatest teaching of humanity. It's explained logically all the way from Genesis to the book of Revelation so you can understand the entire Bible. You could call the numbers you see on the screen. In each of the tribes, so you can contact anywhere that's closest to you to learn the word. We'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we've also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll conclude the seminar now for God who allowed us to have this time to receive His word. Let's give Him a big round of applause to give Him glory.
귀한 말씀 또 증거해 주신 예수님의 사자 우리 약속의 목자께도 다시 한번 박수 부탁드리겠습니다. And to our promised shepherd who gave us God's word as Jesus' messenger, let's also give him a, give him a big round of applause. 